to shred, so I am off. We're here at the chiropractic office, the PT facility, and I'm dealing with something on the right side of my body, from about the top of my glute down to the mid hamstring, that 40% of people will get in their life. It's called sciatica. Tried healing it on my own for months, couldn't get the job done, so I turned to the professionals. And we're gonna walk through a little bit of how to deal with this major problem that you may have had, or you may get in the future, and see what the experts say. Let's head on in. So I'm here with the chiropractor, Dr. Blevins, and before we get on the table, what is the biggest benefit that we have going here for my sciatic issue? Absolutely. So when we have a sciatic issue, most times what happens is that we have a lot of tightness in the low back and the glutes and around that uh, a hip and SI joint. From there, usually we get some irritation of the nerve. The sciatic nerve is one of the biggest, if not, it's the biggest nerve in the body. It runs down straight down the back of the leg, and it uh, is innervated from all five lumbar sp um, spinal segment nerve roots that comes down and creates that sciatic nerve. When we get compression, either in the glutes and piriformis, and anywhere in that portion of the back, we'll get a sciatica, which is a um, burning type of nerve pain that runs right down the back. Um, of that leg usually stops above the knee. Problem is too is that you start getting very tight in the musculature. It's hard to move through the hips and the pelvis when you're walking with that gait, with your gait pattern. So then what happens is that it's basically a vicious circle. You get really tight, it's hard to move, oh, the yeah. inflammation and the sciatic pain increases, and then muscle spasm more, you lose motion and mobility, sciatic nerve pain increases, and it just becomes a vicious cycle. So what we're working on on the table is creating more motion and mobility through the spinal segments by adjusting and also by flexion distraction, um, which is a specific technique that we use the table to do for you. Sweet. All right. Thanks, Doc. Good? Absolutely. Let's get to it. So you're not running the pumpkin run, right? You're just uh, doing the boot No, thing. I'm stretching and helping with marking and stuff like that. All right. So. And is the point of this, like moving it up and down side to side, kind of to loosen yeah, everything up? Yeah, it will loosen up the musculature, but also what it will do is it will create a gapping in between each individual vertebra where I uh, make the contact on its back. And that will add a flexion moment and then a distraction moment where it actually pulls it apart. So if you imagine a bone, a disc, and a bone, it will actually pull apart and help create a little more spacing uh, in that area and give some relaxation as well as some pumping into the area to give the disc a little more fluid and a little more spacing so it can help heal a little bit. This bottom leg stays straight over here. Can you get up close, Ty, so I can get those crack noises? Yeah, I don't know if we'll get them. <laughs> if you want to be fun, closer here, you'll hit a lot. Maybe not because the table. Oh, there we go. <laughs> How'd that one feel? Good stuff. Those are the ones that always scare me when you get it down. It's like, oh my god, no. I know, right? Nah, there's not a lot of twisting in that. So yeah. we actually, when we set them up and get you in that position and back over, see how his nose stays straight up in the air? Mm -hmm. So there's no like twisting. And then when I adjust them, I'll push straight through and over. And while his nose will move some, you notice it always stays in the air. Yeah. Like uh, forcing his neck into an like extreme rotation. Yeah. That can be dangerous just because of the vertebral arteries through the neck. What's your thoughts on those other ones? What are those like ropes that like chiropractors oh, yeah. are using so around the actually neck? Actually what that? that is, um, it's called a condylar lift, is what they're basically doing. It has to do with the, the base of the skull and the first vertebra. And what they're doing is they're just creating like a traction motion through there. It's okay, whatever you want to do is fine, but for me, I don't really like it because it's not controlled. Because um, mm -hmm. you can do, if you don't mind, uh, so you have a demonstration. What you can do instead of the, the towel is okay because the towel gives a little bit of um, like grip for them. But all, these do, all they're doing is they're coming to the base of the skull and they're coming underneath and just giving a quick pull that mm -hmm. way. But instead of being like right up on it and control, that they have a large, and they're yanking out, they're still controlling. Mm. Kind of thing. So yeah. that's in the basics what it's going to end up doing okay. is creating that mass attraction and it's going to get mostly in the occiput, the base of the skull, more so than, you know, and I mean, they end up getting to everything because it's pretty aggressive. But again, with it being uncontrolled, it's not my forte. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Yeah, man, thank you for your expertise. So what we're starting off with today is mobility. So they always have me do these warm-ups for the lower half to kind of limber up the lower half the muscles, etc. Um, I'll do some neck stretches here in a second, which you'll see. I'm just kind of like cranking on my neck with this device, and then we'll get into some strength exercises, some chiro work, and all the rest. 
the size bra. It's hard to get up. It's progressed though. Yeah. Yeah, big time. I don't need, I couldn't even get my foot up on my knee. Hip mobility, open up the hips here. This is a tough one. At first I had to tap every time I stop, but now I can just stay, stay up the whole time. Open up the hips. Nice balance. See, look at this. Thank you. I was just going to say, no tap. You catching all that? The no tap crew. All right, time for some neck cranking. I think this uh, this helps with some correction of the spine, but otherwise I just feel gnarly stretching my neck. Because I never stretch my neck, so it's probably a good thing that I do these. It's like some kind of device from Fifty Shades of Grey or something. <laughs> <laughs> Look like the karate kid with that thing on your head. <laughs> Three different positions, front, side, back. Keep that back nice and straight. They tell me every time, for the longest time, I was slouching while doing this, and they're like, dude, straighten up your back. Get that posture game right. And for the back, shoot my arm through. I feel like I'm on a pulley device. You know? Hey, there's, there's the man himself, Dr. Zach. I'm gonna save the worst warm up for last, okay? Get ready for this. It leaves me very vulnerable because I can't do it very well because of the sciatica. It's just a simple hamstring, but they want me to fully lock out the knee, okay? This side's fine. This is not the side that I feel the sciatica on, so I can lock the knee and get a decent little lean in here. Hold that for about 15, 20 seconds and wait till you see the other side. Not good. One, it takes a while for me to even straighten the leg just because that nerve's like working its way through the glute muscles. Am I grimacing? I'm not grimacing, right? Oh, yeah. This far as you can go? Yeah. Oh, my yeah, God. Definitely. Yeah. Unless, I, unless I bend the knee a bit. Yeah, I pretty much got to stay upright, though, to get any stretch. Well, warm up's done. Let's see what we got next. All right, so they've just given me this foam block. And what I do is I put it on my right side, up high, and down low. And I just kind of do this. Are you really? too slow? So, Sorry, guys. I'm a little slow. <laughs> so what's the purpose of this? What's the benefit here? So when the doctor's looking at your x-ray, you saw that your cervical spine is a little bit shifted to your left. So now we're trying to translate to the right to kind of shift it back to the right so we can get back in the center. And just try to hold it there for another second. And then it's ready today. I kind of look like I'm dancing, right? Looks like it. You can always try. So I guess, as he just said, which I didn't really realize, but my cervical spine is slightly shifted to the left, and so this is to help realign my spine more neutral, I guess. Otherwise, I'm unaligning my spine. Man, I came here five, six years ago, and this place has completely changed inside. And like Tyler, I had sciatica too, with a back injury to my L5-S1 that I eventually had fused together from surgery because nothing helped, nothing fixed it, and I was tired of dealing with the pain. So finally had that surgery and feel 100 times better and, and pain-free. So hopefully Tyler can avoid that route, maybe try some stem cells in the future. But hopefully in the future, it's more widely available, right? All right, so I'm here with the man himself, the owner of the facility, Sycamore Integrated Health, Dr. Zach Sheedy. Appreciate you coming out. Thanks for doing this. So, a few questions. Since I've come here, I've noticed a great benefit and the progression of my sciatica. I tried to heal it on my own, as I mentioned earlier. Didn't have much luck, so I came to the experts, and this is one of the best experts right here. So, first off, what would you say is the main benefit of chiropractic and PT as a whole? I mean, really, there's a couple different ways to look at chiropractic and how it fits into kind of like the healthcare model. Probably one of the biggest benefits of it is going to come with how well your body's moving. There's just certain areas that the general population, whether it's an athlete, a weekend warrior, somebody young or somebody old, their body's gonna get restricted from a normal movement pattern and those movements start to restrict the spinal mobility, starts to change the soft tissue, the, the spine starts to tighten up, joints don't move the way they're supposed to, and it starts to lead in improper movement patterns within the, within the patient's ability just to get around and really starts to cause pain and dysfunction. To answer the question, the best benefit really that most people notice is decreased muscle tension, soreness, decrease in pain, and just better overall joint mobility. Now going there, it was interesting because before I even came here, I was kind of researching, okay, ways to heal or help sciatica. And I noticed some other remedies such as taking anti-inflammatories or muscle relaxers. And I am not a big medicine guy at all, so I didn't even want to entertain that. And so where do you think the benefit is coming to a facility here maybe and working on your body more naturally than just turning to something such as medicine? Yeah, so it's interesting. A lot of patients will go to reducing the infl inflammation through a pharmaceutical or reducing the pain through a pharmaceutical and, and it's, it's really just treating the symptoms. I mean, inflammation is a part of the healing process hmm. and if you're reducing the inflammation, then you sometimes are slowing down your body's ability to heal. So we wanna control wow. the inflammation, but we wanna improve the way 
the way the body's moving to, to, to eliminate the inflammation from really just becoming stagnant or pooled in that area of irritation. Hmm. So an anti-inflammatory medication can reduce some of the symptoms, but it does really slow down your body's ability to heal. Wow. And that makes a lot of sense because I think I was sick like a month ago and it was to the point where like I was willing to take a little bit of Advil and the days that I took it, I noticed I didn't feel the pain, which is like the immediate gratification is like, oh, this is nice. But you realize like that can't be good. Some of the badass quotes you have around the facility here. Uh, will, will you share a couple with us? Yeah. So you know, all, each of them, each of these are they're very specific to a lot of like the philosophy of healthcare that I myself utilize, yeah. you know, one, and I'll just start with the, you know, the true definition of health. A lot of people think they're healthy because their definition of health is they look good, they feel good. So hmm. they're basing health on, on how they feel. And, and, and we all know, I mean, you look at the top two killers in America and it's cardiovascular disease and cancer. And those two things, until they get to the end stages of the disease process, a lot of times you don't even have a symptom yet. You wow. don't even know you have a problem. So you can feel good all the way up to that day you have a heart attack. Damn. If you're waiting to start to eat healthy and exercise the day you have a heart attack, you probably waited too long to, to start those, those healthy habits. But, wow. So you can't wait until you lose your health to start to maintain your health. So that's something that we really, you know, embody here and, and not relying on symptoms to dictate whether you are healthy. Wow. So the true definition of health is is how your body's functioning, both physically, mentally, and spiritually, and not just the absence of disease. So you don't want to wait till you have a disease to determine whether you're healthy. Nice. Some of these other couple all kind of tie in together. You know, Thomas Edison way back in the 1800s said the doctor of the future will not give medicine, but will interest his or her patient in the care of the human frame and appropriate diet and the prevention of disease processes. So that, that's really just looking at lifestyle and looking at how you take care of your body from a health and lifestyle standpoint and not, not just giving medications for it. Hippocrates said look well to the spine for the cause of disease. That really ties into what a subluxation is and what chiropractic really is for me. Chiropractic is balancing your nervous system through your spine. Your, your brain controls every function in your body and it controls it through the neurologic messages that pass from your brain down through the spinal nerves out each one of your spinal segments. So when your spine starts to break down, when you have spinal problems, it limits your body's ability to control and regulate basically homeostasis. homeostasis. It, it changes the way your body functions from a neurologic standpoint, which in turn changes the way every organ, cell, and tissue in your body functions. Mm. Now, like a low back problem, if you're feeling sciatica, enough to go down your leg, that nerve also controls your bowel, your bladder, and your reproductive organs. Mm -hmm. So I don't necessarily always, like I don't get adjusted myself because I have pain. I get adjusted to balance and keep my spine healthy and balance my nervous system so it doesn't irritate my spinal nerves and I can keep my organ systems functioning adequately. So what chiropractic does, does reduce pain but it's also balancing your nervous system because your nervous system is controlling and coordinating all of your organ systems, your hormone system, your immune system. So it really is just as much about maintaining your health and fixing a problem. Yes. Love yeah. it. That's my favorite one by far. That one gives me the goosebumps every time I read it. Yeah. It's like a powerful feeling inside of you, yeah. All right, last thing, I'll leave Zach with this. Why do you think a lot of people frown upon PT and chiropractic? I think a lot of it is just lack of understanding. They don't fully get how it's used. They don't quite understand it. They think it is because of pain. They have a pain, they have a problem, but it's not impacting their life yet. It's not necessarily something that's changing their sleep, changing their work, changing their exercise routine. So they're dealing with some of the pain, the problems that they have. Yeah. It's not until it gets to a point where it starts to interrupt their life and, and they're not able to stretch their way out of it. They're not able to start, you know, strengthening their core and, and, and overcoming that problem and sometimes they just don't know where else to turn and that's when they finally come in here and then once they start to understand what we do as chiropractors and what we the role that physical therapy has in that once they understand it they can start to grasp you know what it's really doing inside their body very well said I think he explained me to a T I tried all these things on my own and I and I came in here and to be honest it's the second time I've ever come to the chiropractor but I was still hesitant if you ever have a reason to go to a physical therapy facility 
be the instigator. Ask the questions, pick their brain, give yourself a reason to believe in whatever you are doing. Don't just go in blindly and be a skeptic because as we've talked about before, the mind is a mental block too. Mm -hmm. You can go through all the motions, do everything someone asks of you, and even if you believe in them, if you don't believe it's gonna work for you, it's a huge block that can really resist the healing process, am I right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they have to be ready to get their bodies healing. They have to be ready to, to take personal responsibility for the outcomes of their health, right? And, and if you're not asking the right questions, you're not a part of the process, you're expecting you know, healthcare or whether it's a chiropractor, a physical therapy, a medical doctor, to be the one healing you, yeah. you know, you're kind of setting yourself up for failure. I mean, health starts from taking our own personal responsibility for the outcomes that we're gonna get. Hell yeah. Thanks, Zach. Appreciate yeah, you, man. And thanks for taking care of me. Yeah, no I'm problem. feeling great. Good. Yeah. I'm glad. Cool, man. All right. That's it. Six minutes of this. Come on. Let's laugh. Sometimes I cut myself short and I only do five laps instead of six, but you're watching me today, Devin, so I gotta do my whole six. Oh, here comes the sweat. Oh, he's already setting me up with the next one. Goddamn. All right, this is, this is next, whatever we got going here. It's like a full body workout today, but we'll have a workout later. Good toss up. Good form only. Brandon, what's, what's the purpose of Tyler doing this for Saturday? All right, one down. The funny thing about this exercise, this is probably the closest thing to what we actually do in the gym, because we'll actually end some of our hamstring workouts with the ball curls, won't we? So yeah, this one I kind of like geek out on because I'm like, oh, I'm actually breaking down my muscle tissue, which isn't the purpose of being here. We're trying to like rehab and heal, but um, I kind of like this because I'm like, oh, I'm in the gym. Getting an extra leg exercise. <laughs> it's so hard keeping your hips elevated on these two. You know, your hips always want to drop on this. But man, keeping them up high. Oh man, today's leg day too. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty fatiguing. No, that would be fine. Look at those hamstrings though. It's like butt cheeks on <laughs> Nice. How was that? Thank you. That was great. Thanks, Coach Dev. See this squat? This is part of my issue. Is like I hate feeling compromised. So to bend down to pick something up, I can't just bend down and pick it up. I gotta like in this weird squat formation because. Let's see it. This is my pickup. This is my pickup stance. I can't just. I can't fold over at the hips, man. You like Tucker taking the shit out? <laughs> yeah, kind of. Nice step ups. How ironic that we have another kind of semi-traditional weightlifting exercise going on here in the step up. This one's definitely a lot more about balance and controlling the movement big time. Coming down. Not much power involved in this one. At least from here. All right, Brandon, so what's this one doing? Same thing, what stabilization of everything. So the more you stabilize that lower, the less the actual hamstring has to work, unless it's like it'll tighten up. And also, the movement is everything. So. You said the less the, the glutes and hamstrings will work? Yeah, yeah the, less, the less they get tense, the less they tighten up like around that side. The more we stabilize the front, that can help. The, the balance gets harder as we go on. Do you notice I'm tapping more? Oh, yeah. Fatigue. Home stretch. It's like an RPE, too. <laughs> as long as I'm doing it right and healing, yeah. I'm fine with that. Nice. And so with this one too, we don't want, I don't want my toes angled in at all, right? Usually it's kind of just one part. I mean, yes, we're strengthening the glutes, but we're really focusing on that because it kind of floss that side of it. Right. Oh, so this is technically like, the purpose of this is partially flossing? Partially, yeah. I didn't know that. I mean, it's the movement that we want, the movement that we need. Everybody yeah. Oh, that reads emotion. <laughs> or lack thereof. Yeah, you just focus. This is the roughest one right in here. This one creates so much tension on the right side with that sciatic nerve. It feels like my hamstring is tight, but honestly I have a lot of hamstring flexibility, but the sciatic nerve is just, for some reason, I don't know the details, maybe we'll get details from the doc later, but I just cannot fold over the hips well at all. Oh, that tension right here is just so, so intense. It feels like it's gonna peel off. The glutes right, right in the hamstring. Oh yeah, lower glute right there. And the weird thing is, check this out though, zero pain when I squat down. It's like that sciatic nerve has no, no pain. It's not What's pinched that? in that position. No, it's not pinched in that position. I'm sweating already. I think it's because you're here holding me accountable. Yeah. It's bright lights, huh? A little extra something, something. Step down. We're not even there yet. He's already warmed me up. They're, they're hustling me today. I think they know. All right, one more set of these grueling straight leg deadlifts. 
and it's such an interesting thing because the more research you do, sometimes it'll heal itself, but if it's serious enough, there's so much inflammation and obstruction back there, tightening of the muscles, something with the spine being slightly off or misaligned, that it just lingers around. And I tried for three months stretching, foam rolling, doing everything I could on my own at home, but it, it was not progressing. If anything, it was getting slightly worse, and so that's why I finally came to these guys and said, yo, I want to feel 100% again. You can't tell I'm in pain, right? Right, Devin? Yeah. I look completely fine. All right, here we're doing, this is called cervical traction. So you can see here, this is what we're doing. Does something, I ain't gonna sit here and tell you what, what the main. Where's that guy's pelvis at in the wall? 60 of these, Devin. What if you drop all your body weight? Oh, uh, I was just thinking about you not having the mic plugged in the right port. Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> <laughs> I was picking the sound up, I'd imagine it's in the right. I'm sure that's what she said before. Too. Wow, yeah. If I had one thing that I could help people understand about chiropractic care, it's not that all we do is reduce pain. That might be one of the biggest, most tangible benefits that people understand, but it's that what we're doing is affecting their overall nervous system and their overall health, and it's improving their overall quality of life based on boosting their immune system, helping regulate and control their digestive system, and keeping their overall body healthy. And I don't adjust my kids because they have a disease or because they have you know, spinal issues or because they have pain. I'm adjusting them to boost their immune system and help keep their body functioning at 100% because what controls function in our body is our spinal nerves that's controlled and housed inside of our spine. Dude, I got the goosebumps from that. For real, that's amazing. I gotta look into this more. Yeah. Even just that study, I'd be, do you know which one it was? I'd have to double check. I think it's called, yeah, it's called the Wilkes study, I think it is, but. And so what was the statistic? You said he was able to trace was, back 90% of the time. He was able to trace back the cause of disease or the cause of death. Like 98% of the time, he was able to trace back through autopsy to a diseased area of the spine. And it's something you wouldn't even think to the general public that would even be remotely related. Yeah, we just had a little patient come in the other day. Primary concern was bedwetting as a teenager. Could not control her bladder function. And then so we, we, go right, we go right to her spine, evaluate her overall balance in her spine. And then there's one area of her spine where it's just completely out of alignment. We know there's nerve pressure on there based on her posture and how her spine's positioned. That particular area of her spine is controlling her bladder function. So wow. she's having problems controlling her bladder. And that area, there's problems within her spine. So then, you know, she's been worked up with MRI. She's been worked up from GI docs. She's been neurologist. She's been through a primary doctor. She's done everything medically under the sun. She's get, been given medications to, to try to control, like, her ability to hold her bladder. She's Imagine. done everything. And it's ruining this girl's life. It really is. Like, she can't go to friends' houses. She can't stay the night at anybody's house and she's a teenager. Oh and, and so we go straight to looking at her spine and, and evaluating her nervous system because that's what's controlling her bladder. So if you don't go to where the function starts, then you're, you know, you're missing some of it. Wow, I would never even think, I mean, did she come here with the thought that you guys could help her with that? Yeah, as like a last resort because wow. she's already done everything else. But if I had it my way, people would understand that as a first line of, of resort and not be chasing the rabbit hole and, and looking at all the symptoms. Because if you're just treating a symptom, you know, if you're treating a digestive sy symptom yeah. without going upstream and really what's causing that digestive, what's causing the malfunction within the digestive system, what's causing the irritable bowel syndrome, is it something that you're putting in your body or is it improper function within your nervous system that's not allowing your body to absorb the nutrients like it needs to, not allow yeah, yeah. you know, your digestive system to work like it should. That makes a lot of sense and I share this with like every other area of life but treating a symptom is like you're always catching up, you're never getting ahead. Yeah. Just like business, life, finances, you know, if you're always trying to keep up, you can never truly get ahead. 100%. Wow. Infertility is another one. We see a lot of women that aren't able to get pregnant, mm -hmm. and then, you know, we correlate their back problems and some of their sometimes back pain, sometimes not back pain, but nerve interference, problems within their spine, and those nerves are controlling the reproductive organs, and so they're having problems with reproduction. Yeah. And they don't even know why, and so they're doing the fertility things and all of that to try to to try to influence their ability to reproduce and a lot of times it can just be traced back to how their body's functioning from a nervous system standpoint. I can't imagine. And that's where your wife's work mainly is, right? Wow. Cool man. Thanks again for sharing. Yeah. Alright, so this is Danny. I'm here doing 
What are these called? Uh, Prolidotics. Prolidotics? Yes. I didn't even know that. Okay. <laughs> What's the benefit of these? You guys have to do these at the end of every super session. Yeah. So basically what we're doing here is, I'm going to go ahead and kind of show you with our here. So basically what we're doing with this is we're trying to return that curvature back on the spine. So that's why we kind of have them start from the bottom right here and then kind of slowly build up. Going up the spine and then again right there. So basically we're just trying to return that curvature into the spine. And is there a reason you have every single person for the most part doing this, from what I've noticed at least? Yeah. So basically since we take, I'll actually go ahead and take that off real quick. I'm just going to slide that a little bit over there. Kind of center it off a little bit more. We have everybody do this just because we take a holistic approach here in this uh, clinic. So basically we're taking a look at everything, you know, from top to bottom. And we notice that a lot of people, it's pretty common for them to kind of have that, you know, slunched over posture just because of, you know, work, you know, desk all day, kind of sitting down like that. So a lot of people would benefit from kind of having doing different things with polydotics and our wall attraction. Yeah, so that's like almost for everybody then, right? Almost yeah. everyone has that forward and Yeah, just because of, a lot of times, just because of the work that they do, that kind of thing, um, they're always kind of like punch over like this. So basically this, okay. we're just trying to repeat that. Yeah. And so even if you don't have an issue, like is this something good for routine maintenance? Because like does your spine always come out of alignment where this is just good to do regularly? That would be more kind of case by case basis. That would be, you know, um, we'll take a look at the x-rays and then from there, you know, that's what will make that decision. Yeah. But some people don't need it, some people require it, so that's why it's case by case. It makes sense. I'd say it's like 70% better. Yeah. I, I have a lot more range of motion and a lot less pain. Just like sometimes when you're sitting there, you can feel a tingling in your problem. It's pretty much gone. Dude, if you try these though, you know what the most annoying part of these is? The tricep hurt. These hurt the tricep so bad because the amount of times I have to push out. Mm. The fatigue on the triceps is unreal. So every time we'll do, I will do these before arm day. I'm like, I'm not gonna be able to go up my five pounds today. Progressive overload's gonna be a bitch. Activation. Go ahead and bend that knee for me. Gonna bring it across from your body. Suck it under. I'm gonna push over your other shoulder. Let me know when you want me to stop. What if I just go and just do like a little like mostly non climbers? No more. Throw it across the board. So this is kind of like a glute performance stretch, um, especially with patients with sciatica, we kind of see that it's a little tighter on them. So we just want to make sure that, you know, we're kind of stretching that out, making sure we're getting that mobility. Back. And then go ahead and push against me here. And relax, deep breath in, let it out, let me know what. Right. And what kind of stretching is this called again, where I push into you periodically? Yeah. So this is called PNF stretching. Basically what we're doing is, as you're pushing against me, we're basically activating those you know, muscle fibers in that lengthened position. So it kind of allows our brain to kind of say, hey, you know, it's okay to you know, go a little deeper into the stretch or whatever. Hmm. So that's why you know, we kind of have you push against you, and that's the reason why we can you know, go a little bit deeper into the stretch. Relax. I'm gonna go and do the same thing on the other side. I'm zone out for a second. I'm just doing my jam. <laughs> oh, yeah? In the zone? And good. Same thing. Let it up. I'm gonna win. So, we're going to dinner with them tomorrow to talk about details of the trip. Okay. Alright, next one, I'm gonna go ahead and pound on this table here. I'm gonna do the hamstring stretch next. Alright. So, I'm gonna go ahead and keep that knee straight for me. I'm lift it up. Let me know when. You see the difference in legs here. Oh, yeah. For real. <laughs> Once that nerve works its way out, it can usually get a little further. Like the Tony Robbins finger pointing, you know? Yeah, and then for real. Stuff, for real. Go ahead and push down against my hand here. And relax. Go ahead and take a deep breath in for me. Let it out. Let me know when. It's coming back. Feels good. You gotta take those little wins, right? Yeah. It's amazing though, dude. When, when this first came about, I totally thought it was just like a oh, fool. Yeah. Getting to tweak something and lifting. It's like, oh, I'll be gone in a week. Yeah. Well, you know, one of those you kind of you know, tweak something in your back, you're like, oh, you know, I got yeah. it. We can chill. Be back. Yeah, I get you. Right. Super humbling. Wait till we do it a second time. That'll go a lot further. Oh, so looking at the camera, look like your your leg was like half of what it was at oh, right now. Man. Go push really? down my hand here. And relax. Deep breath in. Let it out. No one. I'm twitching though. We're out, we're out of limit. <laughs> I say a little bit of bending's okay. Yeah. But that's kind of why I have my hand here. You know, kind of try to force it as much as I can. Sure. Look at cheating, man. <laughs> no cheating. Last one I'll do. I'm gonna go ahead and swing it out to the side. Go ahead and let me know. Alright, you got it. Uh oh, I'm giving him a show up though. Ash is up on the balcony. And good. It's closing time. <laughs> Gonna push it right here. Get it? That'd be a good song to play right now. <laughs> Relax. And deep breath in. Let it out. And no one. Look at him critiquing oh. from up top.